Hey guys, what's up? So, um, you guys can thank the weather for this because I basically have a swimming pool in the backyard now. Um, it's been raining for like three days straight, but um, I figured what I'll do for you guys is a 12 diamond uh, nemesis tutorial because, for one, I had 12D laying around, and two, I had a nemesis that uh, needs a restring, and um, even though I have no intentions of keeping the 12D in it, um, it's just personal preference, but um, I just figured I'd help you guys out by doing it. Um, so without a uh, further stalling, um, I already did the top string. Um, that's how I did it, if any of you guys are. It's an 11 diamond top string. And then I'll show you the back just so you can see it just a little bit easier. Uh, I figured anybody that that knows uh, stringing knows how to do a top string from stringing a top string on a player's head. So um, I figured that didn't necessarily need to be covered. So um, onto the sidewall. As you see, I already strung up one side. This was completely strung. It was just so I could test the pattern. Um, I took out the one sidewall. And uh, it's kind of a uh, Loyola colored um, Loyola or um, if you're from the Syracuse area like I originally am it's Lemoyne Dolphins uh, so anyway what I did on this side um, pretty much simple pattern very similar to mine used every hole except for these two up here and uh, basically what you want to do is with any head Keep the top tight. It's going to reduce width later. Uh, and then basically how I did this is I wanted to do S size down the side because it tends to uh, keep the mesh holes very tight to the sidewall, um, almost actually up on the plastic, kind of like that when it's done rather than being like to the inside, like, like that. So uh, what I'm going to do is go through this hole right here that's not part of the top string. And I'm going to go through the back side of it, not the front. And then just pull your string really through. Um, I have a ridiculously long string because I didn't want to run out of string. It's probably a good idea. And then you just go over the top like I just did. Uh, so you go around the back, through, pull that nice and tight, and then you go over this side, so you can tell I'm pulling it through, and then you want to pull up and down to keep it nice and tight, and then find the end of your string, flop it right back through that hole, and then pull it nice and tight, and there is your first SI. And then from over here, we'll see that I went down to another hole, another hole of mesh, another SI. So you go through, uh, this is probably better. You go through the back side, like if I can get my chubby fingers out of the way, or I'll pull off the desk here, uh, like that. And it's getting stuck around the bottom part of the plastic because the uh, string is too long. So. Just do that, and then again, um, yeah, you go while well, holding this tight up here, good idea right there, uh, you go through the outside, see how, uh, get that string out of the way, there's that hole right there, bring that through, then you'll notice you're creating a big loop right here with this long string. You bring this string through and get that top string out of your knot. Pull up and then down. That'll create a nice tight knot there. And then again, you go through the front side, up through, and not through that top mesh hole. It's very awkward doing it this way. But anyway, there you go. 
and you'll see that it is it's still got a little bit of give which 12d is naturally going to have give and then another side I went through another mesh hole so you're going to want to do the same thing on this side so back side of the mesh pull it through and then get it straight over the top and through again and now here's where the pocket gets fun on these next couple holes because depending on what pocket placement you're doing you're going to want to do a couple different things so right about mid head so uh, with mine what I did over here was a 1SI and that's going to start forming the channel a little higher because I wanted a mid pocket so just so it's not an abrupt like big pocket here and then holy crap it's flat right here so it would kind of look like that without the mesh blowout over here um, so one SI is what I'm doing here you go through one and it's important to stay consistent oops as I just fudged up so it's important to stay consistent if you're going all unders if you went with more of the traditional style with like say not not instead of SIs up here um, then you if you're doing like ones and twos if you go under stay under the whole head or if you go over you gotta stay over the whole rest of the way it just creates a more consistent pocket and looks better overall so since I'm going through the backside I'm gonna continue going through the backside If the string wasn't like a mile long, it would probably go quicker. But, like I said, I didn't want to run out. It sucks when you get down to the bottom and then you're like, oh, can't tie the knot, it's too loose. You had everything looking so perfect. And then all these knots are SIs. So, you just go like that, pull up, down, and then through the back side. There you go. Now through the section I like to call the triplets. Um, sometimes people will skip this middle hole um, and do like a two and skip that middle and then just tie here. But what I did over here was just basically SI through it. Uh, it creates the same effect as a two, um, but also kind of creates less of this bunching look. So if you want a clean sidewall, but you know maybe a little cleaner look it works so go through here and then after I'm done I'll tell you the official uh, you know uh, pattern and all that so let me just go through here oh hey maybe by the end of the end of the stringing I'll actually get a hang of and um yeah I'll get a hang of stringing with it facing the camera. I'm not sure how much you guys are seeing right now, but um, yeah, anyway, there it is. And you'll see every time I tie a knot, I'm pushing out the pocket. Um, that's just to see that, make sure everything with the channel is coming out perfect. Normally, I string both sides at the same time, and I'll come down, I'll string it to a certain point, tie it off in a hole, push out the, the pocket, make sure everything's forming right on both sides, and then I'll untie it untie where I tied off, go down to the next couple knots, do the same on the other side, tie it off, push out a little bit more. So it, it's, it's more of a process in that respect, but you know you're doing everything right before you get to the end and realize you messed up. So it's a little tip. Um, I never really went to like a stringing school or anything. I just kind of uh, learned by doing. So. Um, when I started playing, I think YouTube was um, still in the making, so people didn't have really these, um, when I started stringing, they didn't have all these tutorials and stuff like that, so it, it was more a lot of long hours sitting at the uh, kitchen table or any random table in the house and uh, losing hair on my head trying to figure this out. So as you see, there's the... There's where the pocket's starting to form. We've still got this little blowout down here. 
Um, next up, what I did, this is all SI, like I said. So you had your one SI to start the trips. Then you had SI, SI. Now it's going to be another SI. So uh, try to get the best angle here and get my finger out of the way. So you go around the back. And just like every goalie is different, there are different um, stringing options. Like some people string 12D open, which I personally hate more than 12D itself um, because it ends up becoming super ridiculously whippy and I don't know how the heck they throw with it. But then again, people look at my stick and don't know how I throw with it. So um, that's beside the point. So yeah, you can kind of tell. Channel looks a little wide at this point, but it is even. So what I'm going to do is kind of lock it in a little bit down here. So this next one is going to be a normal interlock. That's going to kind of anchor everything down. So a normal anchor lock, inner uh, or interlock, not anchor lock. Um, let's see, I had the SI there. So again, I'm going to go through the sidewall hole, skip the mesh really for right now, and then come up through through the mesh. There you go. And then, because it's a regular interlock, I'm going to go up under. If it was a knot, I would go over. See what I mean? You go under for a regular, over for a knot. And then just keep that tight. So I'm going to keep my finger on that, that SI just to keep it nice and tight. And then again, tighten that down. And it should look like that. Luckily for this uh, uh, tutorial, I use contrasting colors to string. Yeah, sorry about that on my last ones. Um, <laughs> but anyway, next up, I was originally going to do a two down here, but I realized that the uh, channel wasn't very tight when I did a two. So what I did is an SI like this, and then went through here. like that. And then to tie it off, you'll see these bottom string holes. Uh, technically bottom string, but for this it's going to continue the sidewall. So you go through the back side of the mesh. Uh, there you go. Uh, through the back side here. Yep, that's the right one. And then you just carry it on down and through here. Pull it all the way through and not knot it like I did. There you go. And then you just pound in your pocket a bit. Your pocket will end up looking a lot deeper than this when you don't have the bottom string in. But there it is. It's not the world's greatest 12D pocket. I might fudge around with it. But for somebody that likes a 12D, uh, 2.5 ball deep, that's pretty decent. Um, I could fudge with it a little more and maybe, like I said, skip this triple right here, put in a double. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bag. This one's going to be extremely low whip. And since this is Jimalax mesh, it's going to have room to grow as well. It's not just going to be a bag pocket right from the beginning. So um, I would suggest shooter setup, maybe a nylon this row here, straight across. Um, you might be able to tie off in this hole here. Normally I use that hole when I do a 12D or a 20D. And then I, I purposely skip sometimes these uh, sidewall holes up here because they're grouped together so so uh, closely. And I'll use those to send a uh, nylon through 
just so it anchors it. Um, really creates more consistency when you do it um, through here. And it doesn't look as ugly as going around the plastic, even though it has the same effect. Um, I have just never really been a fan of when people take a shooting string and loop it around the actual sidewall. It just, it looks ugly. Um, it's a big pet, pet peeve. Um, but anyway, um, here is the, uh, the pattern. So I started, um, this is the oval color or oval hole. Then I went, so first small hole, technically second hole, skip, skip, SI, 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 oops, sorry. Um, so again, that was technically second, skip, skip, SI, 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 one SI, 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 um, SI, interlock, which you could probably SI there, and it probably will end up being a little more baggy. And then oh, SI, and one tie off. So I'm going to continue beating on this. But from this side, it looks pretty damn deep. This side, nice channel. This side, eh, not bad. It's got to get some breaking. But um, see, it's not so abrupt. Um, it's got a bit of, you know, travel. So, I mean, yeah, if you pound it down here, it looks very flat. But, I mean, it, it has some nice, nice travel to it. That's that nice general shape that everybody likes in their pockets. Um, technically, this is a mid, mid low, but um, if you want a mid, obviously you'll put in like a two, like I was saying up here. But uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and then if you're trying for a mid, I would do like SIs down in down in these last like three holes, just to kind of start pulling it back. Um, definitely skip this middle hole for a, um, for a mid, but, uh, anyway, hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, if you guys want some more patterns, I guess I'll, uh, since this is a free-based, uh, canvas, I will, uh, gladly figure something out for you. Uh, bottom string-wise, a lot of people do the crisscross. I did a regular, regular U. So, um, uh, that's about it. Otherwise, uh, your shooters, you could probably put in a, let's see, maybe a four point U and a two point U, and then it'll come down. So, yeah, nylon right about here, four point U here, two point U here, and, uh, probably be thrown great. It's probably similar to the one I used, the pattern I used for uh, Kyle's 12 feet Um I think it was a little different because I did knots up at the top too. So, um, but like I said, there's there's many different ways of uh, of getting a, the same result. I just personally like the SIs. It's something I've always kind of done. But uh, if you're more of a traditional knot and uh, one two guy, um, it it works just the same. Uh, I just like how it pulls in with the SI. So uh, hopefully you guys like the video. Uh, it's also my mission kind of helping out some people that don't quite know uh, goalie so much. It might hurt my uh, streaking sales, but oh well. Um, I guess uh, shipping kind of kills some people. So for those people that might not be in the same country or don't feel like spending a lot in shipping costs or waiting for their head and stuff like that, it, it helps them out. So um, I'm glad to help. And uh, otherwise, if you guys want any more tutorials, uh, let me know. I'll see what I can do. I don't have every goalie head in my arsenal. So if you have a specific head, uh, I might be able to just come up with something off the top of my head and try to give you a pattern that way. Um, just know that some of these heads I might not have actually strung before, so 
uh, like some of the gate heads. Uh, that one box head I did, uh, that one was straight off the top of my head. I kind of just, as I was stringing down the sidewalls, I was kind of reading the mesh, I call it. So like as I was pulling it out, um, I would say, okay, this mesh hole kind of lines up here. So I would try a certain knot, either like a one or a two, and I would try it. Let's see it, and then tie it off, see how it came out, Let's see what, what effect it had on the mesh. It's just trial and error. Um, it's basically what I always always did, um, and then eventually I started getting a little better with it. So um, again, just ask me for patterns, and I will uh, try to help you out. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully this helps you a little bit. Uh, I'm I openly admit I'm not the best 12D stringer because I don't do it very often in my own heads, but I'm glad to help. So I uh, will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. And uh, try to keep the criticism to a minimum uh, because it's just going to discourage me from ever doing any more of these things to help other people out. So I'll uh, talk to you later.